In the United States on May 10, 1869, the Golden Spike was placed on the Transcontinental Railroad of Promontory, Utah, linking the two coasts of America for the first time. Meanwhile, in a country town of New South Wales, Australia in that same year, it too celebrated a bit of railway history. On May 27, 1869, 17 days after the Transcontinental's opening, the railway and steam engines of Sydney have arrived in Goulburn, and on May 25, 2019, 150 years later, the New South Wales Rail Museum had conducted a special train with their 3526 from Mosfell to Goulburn. Here we see 3526 coming into Goulburn Station. We'll come back to the locomotive and the day a bit later. But first, let's take a look at the history of how the railway came to Goulburn, Australia's first inland city. Railways started to appear in the form of simple industrial railways for jetties, coal mines and construction work since the European colonisation of Australia in 1788. Meanwhile, some distance away in the southwest of New South Wales stood a town called Goulburn, which was established in 1828. But after repeated flooding, it was relocated to its current area in 1833. Travelling to Goulburn in those times was often challenging with the absence of navigable rivers. Reaching back into the hinterland meant that a new form of long-distance transportation had to be found to replace the bullock team that struggle on rotten earth roads and through terrible mud holes along the Great Southern Road from Sydney to Goulburn. And that new form is, of course... The Railway. On January 29, 1846, a group of Sydney merchants, businessmen and members of the colonial government attended a meeting in Charlotte Place, Sydney, discussing about potentially building a railway line to a vast agricultural hinterland of the state. Chairing the meeting was James MacArthur of Camden. He and Charles Nicholson, MLC, both had interests in the south of Sydney. Goulburn was identified in that very first meeting as the potential location for the railway to be extended from Sydney. After calculating the distance, which was 115 to 120 miles, the likely cost was around 700,000 to 800,000 pounds. Australia at that time was using the pound, shilling and pence until the 14th of February 1966, when the country began using the decimal dollar and cent. After many estimates and planning, construction of the railway line started on November 20th, 1855 in Liverpool when the ceremonial first sod was performed by James H. Atkinson Esquire of Sofenberg. Three months later, February 1856, work was proceeding steadily with 400 men at work. With the building of other stations along the way from 1858 to 1868 for the other townships along the route, the line had finally reached Goulburn and was opened on May 27, 1869. We now move to almost 150 years later on May 25, 2019, where we see 3526 of Mosfell taking on water as it prepares to meet up with two heritage diesel locomotives from Sydney with a special train celebrating the 150th anniversary of the railway line to Goulburn.
After the water was being filled, 3526 will now move from the Sydney bound platform to the southern bound platform to await for its train. We now see the two diesel locomotives, 4490 and 4403, pulling into the station and to be coupled up behind 3526. A special coupling was added to the diesel so they can connect for the onward journey. The train is now seen storming through Exeter. We then see them arriving at Goulburn with a massive turnout from locals and visitors. As 3526 moves away from its train, 
We now move to the Goulburn Rail Heritage Centre and see it being placed on the turntable ready to be serviced for the return journey later in the day. Fun fact, the world's most famous steam locomotive, the Flying Scotsman, also rode on this turntable in 1989 during its Australian tour. As 3526 moves into number 19 shed, Lachlan Valley Railway's 3237 can be seen stored inside the roundhouse just close to the 35's berth. While the 35 has now settled in its berth, let's have a bit of a look at the Roundhouse, the largest operating heritage-based roundhouse in New South Wales. When the line reached Goulburn in 1869, its facilities included a two-road engine shed and two-road carriage shed, as well as a 50-foot turntable. When the line was duplicated in 1913, plans to evolve the present Roundhouse evolved, but was delayed due to most tradesmen fighting in World War I. Work started on the roundhouse in 1918 with the 75 foot turntable installed. Six roads were later added in the 1960s due to the introduction of diesel locomotives. Plants were made by the railways to demolish the roundhouse in 1986 due to the demise of steam and diesel, but thankfully it was saved by dedicated enthusiasts. One of the locos seen here owned by the Roundhouse is 1076, an 060T suburban tank engine built by Vulcan Foundry in Lancashire, England in 1884 for the New South Wales Government Railway. The loco lasted a good 81 years of service, as it retired in 1971 by the railways. It was later transferred to the New South Wales Rail Museum the same year at its Enfield base. It was then later placed in long-term storage in 1983 at Thelmere, until 2008, when it was transferred to Goulburn for restoration. 1076 had worked at Goulburn back in the 1950s. As of 2019, the loco was still awaiting for accreditation. Nearby the tank loco, we see a 57 class loco in steam. I'll bet a bit small. This is 5701 from the Argyle Model Railway Society, which was formed in 1983. Let's have a look at some of these fantastic live steam models on display. After the festivities, it was time for 3526 and its patrons to head for home. Here we see the loco at Long. Originally, the engine was supposed to leave Goulburn around 3.05pm, but due to excessive grease in the grease part of the loco while servicing at Goulburn, the train was delayed, and we see it here around 5.27pm. However, it is common for that to happen in steam engines.
As the train passes us, 3526 was uncoupled at Picton and transferred to Thelmia as a precaution, and the two heritage diesels took the train back to Sydney. To learn more about Goulburn's railway history, Rail Around New South Wales would like to recommend its viewers the Australian Railway History May 2019 Special Edition magazine published by the Australian Railway Historical Society. Available only online, at the ARHS Bookshop at Sydney Central Station, or you can order it by phone with the number in the description box below. Special is on offer as of this video's recording to June 30th. Thanks for watching.